I've got three different chasers here, three different completely different chasers that are, are in three different queue lists, all right, that are now ready to be triggered whenever um, we need them to be triggered. A couple of different ways we can trigger them. As, as before, I said we can do it in the queue list, but you know what? I want buttons that can start and stop these things. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the on the hardware, you'll see up the top here on my console, I've got these M1 through 12 buttons that I can use to put macros on. Now, uh, as I've said previously, the silver consoles that uh, only have this uh, sort of uh, uh, amount of the, the control surface or a couple more, but basically don't have this, this section here, these buttons do something else. So you can't actually use these to trigger macros. But you can use these to trigger macros and you can sort of use numeric values to trigger macros. Uh, for more detail on that, um, you can jump onto the Strand website and find out or jump into the documentation. Uh, but for the moment what I'm going to do very simply is I'm just going to pop the, um, uh, the start and stops for each one of those chasers on these, um, these buttons up here. Alright, now to do that, if you have a look at the screen, I'm going to change my display. Now, the display we're going to go into is this thing called variables. Now, variables, this is where the world of macros begin. We're not going to jump into the full-on programming language that is entirely possible to be used on this thing, but we are going to just use some very simple macros that when I hit these buttons, and you'll see on the screen that um, it's recording the time and date that I hit these various different M keys, um, what happens is that it actually triggers the macro when I hit the button. So variable one, I'm going to double click on macro, and just like before, I'm going to add a macro here, and this time it's queue list go. And instead of queue list one, I'm going to put it on queue list two. Great, done. Macro two, again, edit, queue list go. This time queue list three. Okay, okay, and finally just. I'll do it a little bit slower this time. I'm going to add an action for this macro. All right. Now in this window, worth having a bit of a look. We're not going to play with these sections yet, but there's other stuff that you can select in here. We really only want button down. The macro, we need to change that. The one that we're selecting here is queue list go, and I'm changing the queue list I'm sending the go to to queue list, in this case, four. Okay. And uh, so that I've put in all my goes, I need to put in all my stops, and I'm going to start on macro 7. You'll see why in a second. And uh, this time I'm going to put in a queue list release, queue list 2. OK, OK. Add, edit, queue list release, queue list 3 this time. OK, OK, OK. Add, edit. Queue list release, queue list four, finally. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so there are all my macros there. And if you have a look at the hardware, what we've got here is macros one, two, and three are queue list goes, and Q macros seven, eight, and nine are queue list release. So if I hit M1 and you have a look at the stage, you can see there's that chase going. Okay, I'll stop that chase and start the next one. And there's the next chase. And I'll stop that one and I'll start the next one. And there's that chase. Alright. Excellent. So each one of those chases is fading in over three seconds because that's the um, what's called the assert time of the queue list. Now, we actually, way back in the beginning of, of um, uh, shooting this video, I was showing you through the show options. If you uh, just pop back to the screen, have a bit of a look at the screen, down here, I'll just reopen it again, under show options, and under queue list, you can see the default assert time, and it's currently at one, uh, one second. All right, so we can drop that down to zero. 
and we can drop the default down to zero on the release time. Okay. So now my default start and stop, if we have a look at the stage, we've got QList uh, 3, uh, sorry, QList 4 running at the moment. I'll just stop that one and I'll start another one. All right. Oh, she's still fading up. Now, the reason why it's still fading up is that each one of these queue lists can have their own individual defaults as well. Okay. So, uh, if you have a look at the screen, let's have a bit of a look at those defaults here. So, each one of these queue lists here, and in fact, these two queue lists as well, they can all have their own uh, properties window. So, if we open up, I just right-clicked on there, uh, drop into the properties window, and you can see, again, all of these values are sitting here. All right. So again, we can um, change a specific queue list um, a certain release times for each one of these um, queue lists. Okay. Properties. Okay. And so I've just checked the box. It's put the value of zero there for me. That's wonderful. And so now when I hit my uh, go button on my uh, hardware uh, out on the stage and on the screen, you can see that those lights are doing exactly what we want straight away. Ah, wait a second, I can see where it's picking up at the three second fade time. It's because, of course, I've got a queue time fade here of three seconds. All right, so let's change that to zero. Change that to zero. Change that to zero. There we go. All right. Beautiful. Yep, that's ex doing exactly what we want it to do. And there you go. There's all three chasers running at the same time. How funky and groovy is that? Rock and roll.